the song, never gonna do the same for you. What's up, guys? It's Donna here. And Holly. And you're listening to Teaser Talk. Turn the song, never gonna do the same. You hit the on switch. Turn the song, never gonna do the same for you. What's up, everyone? I am here with Rob from Bowling for Soup. What's going on, Rob? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing awesome. All right. So we are here with you on a big weekend for you guys. It's, what, the 25th anniversary? Yeah, this is the, the, it's like a four-day event. That's the 25th anniversary of the band. Yeah. I mean, like, in with it being a ba- like a Texas-based band um, in Denton, and then we're here in the colony, which is not very far. So I'm sure it's going to be an awesome, like, local type vibe, everything like that going on. And no, you're not from here, though, are you? No, I live in Pennsylvania. So, like, how does that work? And I know I'm just going to just jump right into it. So you've actually, you just joined the band. You're, like, the probably the most recent member, correct? Yes. So that was this year they announced. Yep. But it wasn't like... Um, like, it wasn't, like, just random, like, you're just a brand new person. You were definitely familiar with the guys, right? Oh, yeah. I kind of, like, how it all happened is, um, I mean, it, it, this band, Bowling for Soup has been, they're not, like, a revolving door of members. I mean, yeah. these guys, it's been th- this many, I think 21 years, it's been Chris, uh, Jarrett, Gary, and Eric. And Eric is the, the bass player who, who'd left, so, and that's where I came in, but... They had an original drummer, Lance, for like four years when they first started and before they really got into the touring. He's actually going to be here tonight. He's going to play a song with us. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's really cool. So I, I played in a band, or play still, a band called Patent Pending. Yep. And we just came really close with Bowling for Soup like 10 years ago or something. We started touring together and just, it, by the end of the first tour, we're already like staying, you know, in their bus and just being stupid and <laughs> enjoying each other's companies and just like, we really hit it off. So when, uh... Over the last, you know, decade, it's just been stayed really close, go to each other's houses, you know. So it, it wasn't really much of a thing like, hey, I'm, I'm your, you know, nice to meet you, I'm in the van. It was, <laughs> it was kind of like, it, it just kind of happened organically. Like, they asked me to fill in, you know, that's kind of how it started. Mm-hmm. They were while they were working some things out, and then it just really worked well. And for everybody, it was a lot of fun, and that's kind of what it's all about with this band, more so than other bands. It's just yeah. about being here and enjoying it, and if it's not fun, don't do it anymore. Like, that's literally their motto, and they don't hide that, so. Yeah, and... This is just a fun group of guys. Like, Jarrett's always, like, really funny. Like, just watching his, like, his stage presence. Like, even listening to, like, the music. Yeah. Like, it's definitely... I can see how you guys jive, you know, because Pat and Pending's, like... You guys are kind of fun, too, so... <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah, kind of fun. <laughs> cool. So, how does that work with you being out of state? Like, I mean, obviously, it's not your first rodeo. It's not their first rodeo. <laughs> but, it's like, how does that work? Uh, it's... You know, airplanes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's really it. I mean, <laughs> this band doesn't practice ever which is, you know, that's fine. They've been playing the same songs forever. So for me, I just worked hard at it at home to, like, make sure I was doing it as effortlessly as I'm capable of doing it yeah. so that I'm not, like, bogging them down. Hey, we need to practice so I feel comfortable. The first, uh, actually, the first time I played bass for them, it's funny, I first filled in for them on drums for Gary. Yeah. Um, and it was just because he had to miss some dates on the Warped Tour because he was having, a, his wife was having their, their daughter, and it was just the scheduling worked out really weird, and he was, like, real broken up about it. But they're like, hey, Rob, I used to play drums in a band called the Ataris. Mm-hmm. So they were like, hey, Rob plays drums, and, you know, let's just let's just bring him in. Showed up with them. They were like, we went with, you know, did that really quick and just kind of in and out on that warp tour. But then the next year is when they're like, hey, we need you to fill in on bass. I was like, all right, like, here we go again. I flew down. The day we were leaving, um, we literally went in the practice space and went over, the, like, half of the set list a half of a time. And they're like, you got this. That's fine. And I was like all right, I don't really want to mess this up, like, but okay, like, you know, I try to make that all work out, so really what we do is, um, if we're going to be doing a tour, or whatever it is, it's, I'll just either meet him at the airport, in wherever we're going to, yeah. or, depending on what direction we're going, I'll come to Texas first, we'll just kind of muster, and then take off from there, so. For sure. It just depends on which way we're going, we're going to Europe, I'm not, like, going to fly to Texas, yeah. and because <laughs> I hate yeah. flying as it is, but, you know. So, like, Warp Tour, let's talk about that, because, you know, like, I don't know, I guess that's a sweet spot for me, because the podcast was founded there, or, like, first interview was there, so I always, like, love it. It's last year, well, I guess last year was the last year. Were you, were you at the last one? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, so I guess this year is going to be the anniversary, but there's only, like, three dates. So, like, what amazes me is literally they build a city in a day. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I mean, between... I've done it twice with Bowling for Soup, a billion times with patent pending, and, yeah. and just over, you know, it never, 
I'm never like, wow, that's... It's, I don't know, it's kind of crazy how fast they set up six stages or whatever it is and just take over a parking lot and, like, make it their own thing for the day. Just fence it in and that's done. And then watching it all go down at the end of the day yeah. is as fast as it went up. And then they just do it in the next city day after day. Like, I can't even comprehend what it's like to be part of that crew yeah. for the warp Tour. So, I mean, I think that's kind of why... They're like, all right, 25 years, we did it. Like, I don't think we need to, you know, beat ourselves into the ground. So now it's like they're just doing sort of the handful of festivals. Mm -hmm. So when they said the tour is over, that's what they meant, the cross-country tour. Because I remember when they announced these shows, Atlantic City, and today is actually the Cleveland one. Yeah. And then uh, there was the one out west. Mm -hmm. Uh, People were like, whoa, you said it was over. Like, you really, you know, went back on that. And it's like, no, they did exactly what they said they were going to do. Like, still do some events and, you know, keep it going, but just not the cross-country tour because... Kevin, the owner, is yeah. really involved, and, like, I feel like if he's not there, it's not going to run the way it should, and I think he feels that way, too, yeah. and, he you know, people get old, so I think he's just kind of, like, you know, done with that. Hey, Swin. What's up? I'm doing an interview. You want to hang? <laughs> You're good. That's You're our manager. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Holly. Swin. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, super cool. So, you know, I think, um, I remember, I think it was Jess telling me about, like, one time that they went through... And there's this, like, little gas station at this little town about a close. And they walked in. They were, like, one of the first people to walk in. And the lady was like, oh, we, we're closing in about five minutes. And Jess was like, no, you're not. We're going to get, we're about to, you're about to get, like, a $3,000 real quick entry because, like, all, like, all the, the whole The convoy? Tour, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, like, And it all travels there. together. Yeah, that's crazy. Because bus calls at the same time. So it literally takes over the highway. Like, if you've seen it before, it's insane. I have, I have yet to see it. I need to look that up because. Because it's, like, it's. It's like 50 tour buses and tractor trailers and vans and cars. Like, every vehicle you can imagine that yeah. is not a plane. Just kind of just all leaving at the same time going to the next city. Yeah. And they'll just take over, like, a truck stop. And it's just a bunch of, like, you know, dumb, drunk, tattooed idiots. And they're like, I need a taquito. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, you don't worry about eating that gas station food. Like, it's actually something you eat. You just oh, keep yeah. rolling with it. It's yeah. fine. You make it work. <laughs> yeah. So, as far as, like... You know, like, logistically, I mean, Kevin's amazing, and I agree with you. Like, it would not be the same without him. I just sure. feel like there's, like, it's a his, lot. It's his baby, you know? It is his baby. But, man, he has to be kind of exhausted. That's crazy. But, yeah, uh, are you going to be catching the Atlantic City one? We're playing that Oh, one. you guys are playing yeah, it. Yeah, we're playing That's the awesome. Atlantic City date on, uh, I don't know if they're saying what bands are playing what days yet, so I'm just going to side with caution and just say we're playing that weekend. Yeah, it's a two-day <laughs> band. Like, flip the coin, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's we'll there. be there. I mean, cool. there's a lot of deductive reasoning going with what bands are playing what days because a lot of bands have announced their summer tours. Yeah. And they'll be like, that date omitted from their tour schedule. So it's like, I wonder which date they're playing the yeah. Warped Tour show, yeah. you know? So <laughs> you can figure it out by looking, using the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, what's interesting, and I want to talk to you about this, is like multiple bands. So it's not like obviously a hobby for you at this point. Like, you're, it's your profession. You're definitely a musician. And, you know, I think of it as like, you know, I always know a lot of people if they're local bands and stuff like that, they are like, you know, oh yeah, I'm in this band, this band, this band. But like, what made you commit to being professionally, not just in one band, but being professionally in both bands? Because you guys, you're two big bands. Like, why did you choose that? Uh, well, I mean, it's just fun. I like to do it. And, and <laughs> uh, to be honest, Pat and Penning's like touring schedule is sort of not, it, it's not crazy. And it has been for a while. I mean, we're, we're all getting older and stuff. We've all done the been out for 10 months at a time. Bowling for Soup did it, you know, forever ago. And we've done it a long time ago. And it's just kind of now it's, no one wants to be out for more than 10 days at a time anyway. So um, when it's your, when it's what you do and it's only like, you know, pepper throughout the year because... I mean, the dude, uh, our drummer in Patent Pinning, he just had a baby, you know, so obviously the schedule's gonna loosen up a bunch, and our singer has, like, three little kids, and, and they're, they're, we're all, like, kind of at that point, so when Bowling for Soup was like, hey, like, we're gonna kind of pick up the pace a little bit, we want, we want to, like, not, again, like I said, not be out for more than a week or so at a time, they're like, let's, let's do it, and I was like, yeah, it sounds great, like, to be more active and keep playing more, because, you know, I like, I love being a musician, I've been playing music since I was, like, 12, so it's just kind of part I, you know, it's part of my identity, I think. That's how yeah. I feel. Not to be, like, profound about it. Or anything. It just, <laughs> yeah. to me, when I think, you know, a lot of my friends I've known forever, like, oh, Rob, like, our, our friend who's a musician. That's yeah. kind of, you know, that's what it is. And I'm not the greatest musician, but I just have fun. I like doing it. I like being part of uh, anything to entertain people because, I don't know, it's fun. How, yeah. how could you not want to do that? <laughs> what was the first instrument that you learned to play? Uh, drums, actually. Yeah. When I was, like, when I was, like, 12 or so. And then at the same time, it was in my first band, 
and when the other guys it was like my brother and his two friends were, were the and then me so like two years younger than them yeah. and when you're 12 two years is a big difference so those guys would go do their own thing after we were done with band practice and I like picked up the one dude's guitar and like would just play along to like uh, Dude Ranch by Blink-182 yep. that was how I learned how to play guitar that and like a No Effects album or something that's awesome yeah so <laughs> that's uh, that's just kind of how I got into it I just loved I just grew up on that music and which definitely, I think that translate a lot into like your style now, like the type of music that you. Play. Oh yeah, I mean, like, it's all the, yeah, it's like well, the same. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. People are say this, is, that's just punk, and this is that, and whatever. I just still rock music. It's it's it's, it's a couple guitars, bass, drums, and, and singing, and yeah. and you know, that's it. It's a rock band, and I, that's what I like to do for me. Like you know, I, I like listening to other stuff, but I like to play rock music. <laughs> I like it. As, like, what instruments do you play? Is it just drums and guitar? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I can I can play, like, half of a song really terribly on piano or something. <laughs> so, like, really, if you wanted to, you could kind of be, like, your own band. Like, you could... <laughs> I could uh, no, it would be a terrible band, but, yeah, I could do it. You always like, no one would people, like it. <laughs> like, on the streets of Vegas, like, playing, like, their oh, little... Oh, that, no way. I don't know, know that kind of court... <laughs> yeah, no, those people are... All those, like, They're know, talented. Yeah. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, before we let you get back to the show, I know it's about a star. You guys are getting ready. Everything else. Do you have last words for fans? Um, I could do a couple of things here. So, he actually just walked out. But Swin, who's just in here, our manager, last night, I feel like I need to tell somebody this because it's hilarious. <laughs> After so the Nixons played last night, yep. and they were done playing, and we're just hanging out and talking and stuff. And it's the end of the show. People are kind of drunk and walking around and stuff. And this guy comes to us, and he try, he spends like 20 minutes straight trying to convince us that he's from the year 2048. No. I just wanted to put that out there. That that happened last night. And uh, it was insane, and the guy was like not letting up. I really admire his like commitment to the bit. And then like by the time I was like, obviously I don't believe him, but I'm like, man, like he's, he's covering some ground here. And then he's like, I'll just mess with you guys. I'll see you later. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang. I was like, I, I was kind of hoping nah. you wish that he would, like, tell you some crazy, like, oh, every, stock tips or some he, he new kinda, technology. He had a lot of holes in his story. Oh, every okay. time I was like, hey, like, so then how come you can't tell me this? Like, I'm not allowed to speak about that. I'm like, that's a great cover. Yeah. You know? It had nothing to do with anything we were talking about, but yeah. I feel like it was an interesting tidbit. Yeah. That's uh, last words. Um, man, I hope whenever this plays that anyone from the Dallas area that came to the show enjoyed it because I'm very excited to play this one. It's a big deal for, yeah. you know, for this band to do, you know, 25 years. Um, and for me to be a part of it's kind of crazy. I mean, I was you know, much younger when they started. <laughs> so um, it's just a big thing. And I've always loved Bowling for Soup before I knew them. So to be playing here and doing this is a big, you know, it's a big thing for me. And, and it's to continue to play music professionally is a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A blessing. So I'm stoked. It's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. You are amazing, and I will catch you guys at the show later. Sweet. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Teaser Talk. We look forward to seeing you next Teaser Talk Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at, at @teasertalk. Talk. This way, we can keep up with you guys until the next episode.